Good morning and welcome to worship with the congregation of the Presbyterian Church in New at Peace Chapel in almost New Brunswick, but not quite anymore. Um, see, I have two weeks out of practice. I've got to get this back, get, get myself back in the groove. I'm, but I am glad we can all be here together here. And those of who are with us on Zoom and out in, out in Zoom world, I'm glad you're there too. Um, all the usual all the usual announcements. If you're out in Zoom world and you're on a laptop or a desktop, you're seeing the bulletin on the left-hand side of your screen. If you're on a phone, it's probably down below the picture of me. And um, that will scroll along. We invite you to read aloud the lines that are in bold print, even if you're muted, so that you're taking part with us and sing along with the songs. We'll turn the mutes off when we get to um, sharing joys and concerns before prayer time. And then again, at the end of worship, for a little bit of online fellowship while we're having fellowship here in the sanctuary. So all of those things. If you're worshiping via Zoom, um, you are welcome to share your gifts with us either through the Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app. Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement, V-A-N-C-O, if you put that into your um, app store um, piece, it'll get you to the right place and enter, I think we're still saying Presbyterian Church in New Brunswick there. I think we're still waiting for that to be officially changed. We're working on it, but there's paperwork. So you tell it Presbyterian Church in New Brunswick and you can give electronically, um, or you can mail gifts here to the Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel at 1212 Livingston Avenue in North Brunswick, 08902. Children should have paper and pencils or crayons or handy um, to draw pictures during the sermon, and we'll talk a little bit about that before the scripture lesson. So I think that's everything for getting us together for this morning. Chris is going to play through our gathering refrain, and then we'll all sing it together. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I yell out to my God. I yell with all my might. I yell at the top of my lungs. God listens. Chris is going to play through the psalm, and then we'll all sing it. My God would hear my soul's dark night gives me no rest. I'm drowning in my fear, communing with my heart. I felt as if God turned away, as if my maker spurned. I please and would not hear me pray. I thought of 
about God's endless care of how God's day bright grace had worked through all my ancestors to bring me to this place. My wonder worker saves us all. The waters turn and flee ahead of God's most holy might that leads me to be free. Beloved in Christ, I greet you with God's great words, grace and peace. Glory to God forever. Amen. And now let us confess our sins and leave our burdens at God's feet so that we may go forth free and forgiven, living out the promise of our baptism. Let us do all this, beginning with the prayer we find either on the left side of your screen or in your leaflet. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you hardened by cynicism and apathy. Melt us in your passion. We come to you twisted by fears and frustrations. Mold us with your righteousness. We come to you left hollow by selfishness. Fill us with your justice. We come to you with gifts we fail to nurture. Use us for your wholeness. Gracious God, we have gotten so much wrong and we need to be set right. Hear us as we confess. Listen to these words that we may trust from 1 Peter. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, Christ prays for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. This Chris doesn't play and we just all sing. Dana se dana se dana me a se dana se dana se dana me a se if ya se o ye nana do e do e so dana se dana se Da honya me a se, da nya se, da nya se, da honya me a se, da nya se, da nya se, da honya me a se. If ya se, ho ye, na na do e do e so. Dana se, dana se, da honya me a se. Believe this good news and live in peace. God has shown us what is good. And what does God require? That we do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you, and also with you. Let us greet one another, still not touching, still being a little COVID careful, but like so, with the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. 
Danya se dana se danya me ase Danya se dana se danya me ase If you say oh yeah nana do e do e so Dana se dana se dana me ase Dana se dana se dana me ase Dana se dana se dana me ase If you say oh yeah nana do e do e so dana se dana se dana me ase Okay and I'd like to now visit with the any young children who are uh, who are with us um before we have bible stories and sermons and all of that good stuff. If, and if you're just young at heart and you want to take part in this, especially if you're out in Zoom world, we can't tell, so go right ahead. We have a story today, one of the first of three stories that we're going to have that are all about a fellow named Elisha. Now, Elisha in this story is still the assistant to a prophet named Elijah. So it's a little different, but the names are almost the same, so that can get a little confusing. But Elijah was a very great and powerful prophet, and there's a whole lot of stories in the first book of Kings and the beginning of the second book of Kings about Elijah. And some folks think that our story today is about Elijah. This is the story about when Elijah goes up to heaven. And he's going to be carried by God up into heaven and you're going to hear about that and you're going to hear about fiery chariots and all sorts of cool stuff and people knew that this was going to be the day that that was going to happen and Elisha or at least people who were prophets knew they had had visions and Elisha is Elijah's helper and he knows something's going to happen he knows we have to be ready and he wants to be there he wants to stick with Elijah right to the end now you're going to hear all about that story you're going to hear about how Elisha does stick with Elijah and that's why i think it's really a story about Elisha even more than Elijah cuz Elijah's going to be there and he's going to walk and he's going to say oh no you don't have to follow me a couple times and Elisha's not going to have any of it he's going to keep following but it's Elisha who gains the spirit from God after Elijah leaves. So I think it's an Elisha story. Now here's the other thing you need to know. And that is what what their names mean. Elijah, which is E L I J A H, means God is God. God, the name that Moses heard that was unpronounceable is God that jaw on the end of that is to take taken from that name that was unpronounceable Elisha means God lives so his name is a little different and it means God lives and this is important in part in this story because he, Elisha is going to keep say when Elijah says oh you can you can just stay here you don't have to come with me Elisha is going to keep saying as God lives I will not leave you. And that's right in his name. And that's going to come up later when he's in ministry on his own and the stories we hear in the next couple weeks but right now that's going to come up right there. And so he's going to get this spirit from Elisha Elijah. And then he has to figure out what do I do with this? You ever have anything like that where you where you wanted something and you wanted something and you you were just sure you had to get it and you did chores to to save money or you were really really good for your parents and a lot and a lot and a lot and all of a sudden then you finally get this thing and you say oh well now what do I do 
because you've been so busy trying to get it? Well, that's sort of where Elisha is. Now, Elisha is going to start figuring out pretty quickly what to do, and we're going to hear that even in the story. But we're going to hear this other story, or actually a portion of a letter that Paul wrote to the Galatians, Christians in a place called Galatia. And he's going to talk about the fruits of the Spirit. And so the things that we should be doing if we have the Spirit, the things that if we're doing them are because of the Spirit. And then he's going to talk about some things that aren't fruits of the Spirit, that are the bad things, the not good idea things. And so sometimes it's not so much a matter of what we do as what we realize we shouldn't do. Sometimes that's hard. But God lets us keep trying again and again and again. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about how God's Spirit shows up maybe in your life, helps you do good things, and how sometimes we forget. But God lets us try again. Okay, so always before we have Bibles, and you can draw pictures about that or about what happens with Elisha and Elijah during the sermon. And of course, always before we have Bible stories in church, we say a prayer, and at the end of the prayer, we say amen, so the grown-ups are going to help me with the prayer. And then I'd like you all to say amen as loud as, as loud as you can, so loud that we can hear you here, okay? Are you ready? Let's pray. Spirit of brooding and nurture, open our imaginations to your good news. Spirit of understanding, open our hearts and minds to your word. Spirit of boldness and wonder, open us to your new life. And we all say, Amen. Okay. Listen for a word from God in this story from the second book of Kings. Just before God took Elijah to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on a walk out of Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as God lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The guild of prophets at Bethel came to Elisha and said, did you know your ma that God is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, he said, I know, but keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. God has sent me to Jericho. But Elisha said, as God lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So they went to Jericho. The guild of prophets at Jericho came to Elisha and said, did you know that God is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, he said, I know. Keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me on to the Jordan. But Elisha said, as God lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So both of them went together. Fifty members from the group of prophets also went along, but they stood at a distance while the two of them stood at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and hit the water with it. The river divided, and the two men walked through on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, what do you want me to do for you before I'm taken away from you? Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. Elijah said, you have made a difficult request. If you can see me when I'm taken from you, then it will be yours. If you don't see me, it won't happen. They were walking along, talking, when suddenly a fiery chariot and fiery horses appeared and separated the two of them. Then Elijah went up to heaven in a windstorm. 
Elisha saw it all and shouted, My father, my father, you, the chariot and cavalry of Israel. When he could no longer see anything, he grabbed his robe and he ripped it to pieces. Then Elisha picked up the coat that had fallen from Elijah. He went back and stood beside the banks of the Jordan River. He took the coat that had fallen from Elijah, rolled it up, and hit the water. He said, where is God, the God of Elijah? When he struck the water, the river divided, and Elisha walked through. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. As I told the children, Elisha's name means God lives. Elijah's name means God is God. So when Elijah keeps saying, as Elisha, I should say, keeps saying, as God lives and as you live, I won't leave you, he is pledging to hold on to his friend with his very life, to follow through to wherever Elijah is going. We may think this is Elijah's story, his last big hurrah, but it really, to me, seems to be a story about his assistant, Elisha. He seems to have the most to say here. He refuses to back down when, he, when his mentor and the companies of prophets that they meet try to warn him off. God is God, and God lives, and Elisha hangs in there and receives the same spirit Elijah had. Whether it was a double portion kind of remains to be seen. We'll hear stories the next couple of Sundays. Now the thing is, once one has gotten this spirit, what does one do with it? Listen for a word from God in this portion of Paul's letter to the Galatians. Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. It's absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want and destroy your freedom. After all, the whole law toward others is summed up by this one command. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if freedom means merely that you are free to attack and tear each other to pieces, be careful that it doesn't mean that between you, you destroy your fellowship altogether. I say be guided by the Spirit and you won't carry out your selfish desires. A person's selfish desires are set against the spirit, and the spirit is set against one's selfish desires. They are opposed to each other, so that you shouldn't do whatever you want to do. But if you follow the leading of the spirit, you stand clear of the law. It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Sexual immorality, moral corruption, doing whatever feels good, idolatry, drug use, and casting spells, hate, fighting, obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, group rivalry, jealousy, drunkenness, partying, and other things like that. I warn you, as I have already warned you, that those who do these kinds of things won't inherit God's kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. Those who belong to Christ have crucified their old nature with all that it loved and lusted for. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. God is God, and God lives, 
and Christ has set us free to live a free life. We have, each and all of us, been given fruits of the Spirit. And where God lives, we can set the Spirit free. But here's the thing. The Spirit is not set free by letting everybody buy whatever guns they want. The Spirit is not set free by using might to enforce one's will upon others. I can beat you up. I can bomb your country into submission, so I, I must be right. The Spirit is not set free by cheating to win or perpetuating a lie for political advantage. The Spirit is not set free by standing by and doing nothing while laws oppress other people. And the Spirit is not set free by insisting that fetuses be protected at all costs until birth, but then taking no responsibility to feed, house, clothe, and educate the children who are born. Once they're born, they're not our problem. Or the Spirit is not set free by caring for the by refusing to care for the mothers who you force to bear those children. Let's be clear. The Spirit does not care what is constitutional or not. And just because something is constitutional doesn't necessarily make it a good idea. And just because something is technically correct or technically incorrect doesn't make it just or right or wrong in the eyes of the Spirit. Problems in our society surrounding abortion, education, guns, health care, and many other things are not just reflective of failures of the Supreme Court. These have been failures of people in our government to write laws and have the conversations we've all known we needed to have for decades. And they're a reflection of our failure to take up the mantle of citizenship and go to elections and go to meetings and hold those people who are in our government accountable. When we fail to do that work as a society, we are being selfish. And when we let people be hurt because we were being selfish and didn't wanna, didn't wanna get up and say things, didn't wanna go out and vote, what difference was it gonna make anyway? We're not following the leading of the Spirit. When Elisha received Elijah's Spirit, he went to the river and immediately made use of it and kept doing so his whole life. And through that, God lived. If we keep working for love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, God will live in what we do and the Spirit will be set free, even when we're not all agreeing all the time, even when it's difficult. But we need to work for all of these things. We need to live all of these things for all people all the time. If we say, well, the law is taking care of us, what's the problem with those other people who are getting the short end? then we're not living by the Spirit. Because we can only live a free life if everyone has a chance to be free. We can only live by the Spirit when everyone has a chance to live by the Spirit. Giving everyone a chance Sharing those fruits with everyone sets the spirit free. And when we set the spirit free, then God lives. Let us pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your spirit to the honor and praise of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Chris is going to play through the hymn, and then we'll all sing. Again, I welcome everybody to worship this morning. I'm glad you can be here with us, either out in Zoom world or here in the, here in the chapel. Um, and it's time for us to be sharing our joys and concerns. So um, if you are out in Zoom world, I invite you to turn your mutes off. And while we're getting ready for that part, um, I'll share just a few announcements about the next couple of weeks. It's getting a little quieter because it is coming to summer. And yet the session still gets to have a meeting today after worship. So session folks, I remind you. And the presbytery gets to have a meeting on Tuesday. And then we'll all be back here for worship next Sunday. And I'm glad of that. Remind everybody that next Sunday is a communion Sunday. Um, so if you're out worshiping in Zoom world, you'll need to have a little bit of bread and a cup with some juice or wine handy. 
Um, and if you're here, it'll all be provided, so that's fine. Today, right at the end of worship, Helen Bird is hosting um, fellowship time for the last time she was signed up for for this summer, but that means we need people who are signed up starting next week. So I've been saying this for all of June, well, I've been saying it for all of June and part of May when I was here, and I hope somebody else was saying it while I was gone, because here it is. Next week, we need somebody to host fellowship time, which means you need to be able to get the waters out of the fridge and the snacks out of the kitchen and set up the table and figure out whether um, it's a good day to be outside, which we like, or if it's a good day, like probably today, where even though it's nice outside, um, I told Helen, you know, I really don't want to have to watch anybody fall over in the heat, so we'll probably have fellowship inside. Um, but we need folks to do that. So talk to Rita, talk to me, see if somebody can do it. Oh, Jim is, Jim is volunteering for next Sunday. Pardon? Are you, you're waving your hand. No, I thought, uh, I heard you say something about hearing No, nope. Okay. Nope. So he hasn't volunteered, so we still need a volunteer. So somebody get ready to volunteer for next week. See Rita or see me after worship, and we'll get you all set. Today is our last Sunday where we're, our special food collection is macaroni and cheese. There's lots of macaroni and cheese there by the little box by the door. Um, all of that will go off to um, Bayard Street Presbyterian Church, where we do our cooperative food pantry and feeding program the last Saturday of each month. So yesterday was the day we had the food program. Um, Starting next week, for the month of July, we're asking folks to bring in a can of tuna fish each week. So remember and go and get tuna fish while you're at the store and bring it in and share that here with us. And of course, you know, if somewhere during the, if somewhere during the month you're on vacation and you're not going to be here, then the week before or the week after, bring two cans of tuna fish and it'll all even out. We don't have to count the cans of tuna fish every week but they all go to do good work. I am thank Barbara Meyer for having been on call while I was away, and we're glad of that. And here I am, and I'm back, and I'm back until the middle of July. So, okay, do we have any special prayer concerns or joys that we need to be sharing in our prayer time this week? Carol, hang on and let... Um, Tom, get to you with the microphone. Um, today is the first day that Camp Johnsonburg is open for the summer campers. I would like prayers for the staff and for all the campers that are going to be going this summer. Okay. As some of you may know, especially those on, on session, the, um, this is the 62nd year of this camp and they are looking for donations from individuals as well as congregations so that children might have scholarship funds and be able to go to camp for a week. They're asking for $62,000. As of Friday, I believe it was about 35,000 had been received if they get the entire 62,000, approximately 70 children will be able to go to camp. They will be taken off the waiting list and enrolled. I'm happy to say that uh, the mission team is sending, on behalf of the congregation, a full scholarship of $875 to the camp. Next week, my granddaughter Kiara will be going to camp for the 11th year. This is a highlight in her summer and in the summers of many, many children. And I thank this congregation for the support that they have given our family for my grandchildren to go. Jaden will be going three weeks from today on the 17th of July. And this is Jaden's ninth year. 
I would urge all of you to support Johnsonburg in your prayers this summer as they are looking forward to a successful summer for these children at camp. Okay, so we'll keep Camp Johnsonburg and all of the staff and all of the campers in our prayers this week and for the next several weeks as they go probably till about the middle of August. Through the first week of August, okay. Barbara. A joy. Uh, it's Helen Bird's special birthday this weekend, and she certainly is an angel in our midst, our lives. She has been an angel in our church and for all of us for so many years, and we're so thankful for her wonderful life and all that she means to us. Okay, so yes, we are thankful for Helen and for the gift of her life. Are we getting all of the embarrassing Helen out of the way now or are we saving some for the end of worship? We're saving some for a little later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, Helen wants rebuttal. No, I just wanted to say uh, a PS to what Carol said about children in camp. I'm a prodigy of uh, youth sh church camp, and uh, for children to be able to, to go to church camp, it, it really is something. And believe me, it was, what, 70 years ago that I went to camp? Um, prayers for my daughter-in-law, Jeannie, who begins radiation this week for the next three weeks. So please, let's pray for all people who... Uh, are in need of, of such medicine, mm -hmm. and thank God that we have these treatments. Yeah. So prayers for Jeannie as she um, undergoes treatment the next few weeks. Anybody else? Anybody out in Zoom world? Oh, yes. My name is Jen, okay. and... Um, yeah, Jim? Jim Schlauber? Yep, hi. <laughs> um, I just want to let you know that, um, like last week, I had two procedures done at St. Peter's, and they're talking about uh, um, another blood transfusion. I already had two of them down in Plainsboro, mm -hmm. and there's like medical. Uh, injuries I had from the past, mm -hmm. you know, I don't even want to mention, you wouldn't believe half of them, but they all happen, and I wish someone would uh, just pray and maybe I'll get through it. I will, I know, and I'm just being a big baby. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. We will keep you in prayer, Jim, so everybody keep Jim in prayers this week. Um, and help the doctors figure out what's going on. Um, I'll add I'll add a prayer request then to that because um, I had spent I realized I got news about Calvin while I was gone and so I didn't share it with all of you. Um, Calvin Calvin, my grandson, has been doing better. He is now close to two weeks off of the ventilator. So that's good, um, and other things are progressing. I'm not sure if he came home from the hospital in the last couple days or not, um, but had a bunch of milestones he had to get through before they were going to go ahead and send him home. But he was, he, I, and I'll show you pictures later, the ones who want to see them. Um, he's off the, off the ventilator and off of all that stuff. Still had a feeding tube the last time I saw a picture, but don't know where that is at now. But he's improving, so we're grateful for that. Please keep him, continue to keep him in prayer. Um, keep my son Christopher and his wife Kate in prayer as they deal with you know stuff at home and stuff with stuff with the hospital. I know that their family leave time was supposed to be running out this week, so I don't know what's going on with that and how they're juggling going back to work and things as all of that happens. Um, so 
please do pray, continued prayers are welcome and thanks for all the prayers you've shared for so far and let's keep um sam and obena and the whole family of kwaku amankwa in our prayers um his funeral was friday and we buried him yesterday over at elmwood cemetery um and so um just keep that family in prayer as they continue to move through their process of grieving Ah, uh, yes, of course. Summer is here and children need attention and Mamie's health is not good. Okay. So continued prayers for Mimi and her grandchildren. And we'll keep them in prayer. Anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so thanks for George's life as well as Helen's. Anybody else? Okay. As we get ready to listen to Chris play and share our gifts, hear these words from the Psalms. The earth is God's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. And so let us now gladly share our tithes and our offerings from our life and from our labor unto our God. As we continue into our time of prayer, you'll see that we begin by singing a stanza of the hymn. Chris will play all the way through at that time, and then we'll sing. And then there are some places where I will say to make a difference, and each time I say that, um, I'm sorry that it's a little diffi more difficult to read than um, because Microsoft, as Microsoft likes to do, decided to rearrange my page um, and put this on the next page. But each time I say to make a difference, we all sing the refrain again, praying, let us work for peace. And then finally, when I say, and be the difference you require, then we'll sing all the way through the second stanza, which will show up on the next page or when, when Tom scrolls down, depending on where you are, where you are and how you're following along. And in between will come our prayers. So let us begin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Chris will play and then we'll all sing.
may the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice speak this on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new faithful when we hear Christ's call. God of hope, we pray for the world you have given us, and we pray for all the people in it, especially those who are in places of conflict or danger this day. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine, for people who are refugees in so many places around the world, either because of natural disasters or violence or war for people who don't know safety right now. We pray for those who lay down their lives, women and men, for the safety of their brothers and sisters and neighbors, wherever they might be. And we pray for our leaders, for our president and representatives, our governor and legislators, people who administer the affairs of our nation, our state, our cities and towns, and those who administer nations and states and cities and towns all around this world, that whether they confess your name or not, they might, that you might lead them and they might lead us into your truth, your freedom, your peace. We pray for our world, O oh God, and we pray for ourselves. Form us and reform us to make a difference. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new, faithful. When we hear Christ's call. God who fills our lives, we pray for those in special need this day. We pray for those without homes or hope. We pray for those who are imprisoned or alone. We pray for those who are ill or infirm, especially for Jeannie and Jim and Calvin and Mimi and her grandchildren. We give thanks for lives among us, especially for George's life and especially for Helen's life. And we pray for those who mourn especially Kwaku's family. We pray for those in need, O oh God, and we pray for ourselves. Form us and reform us to make a difference. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new, faithful, when we hear Christ's call. God of justice, we pray for your holy church, for this congregation gathered here, for our sisters and brothers in and around North Brunswick and New Brunswick. For the staff at Camp Johnsonburg and the campers arriving today and who will keep arriving all through the summer. And for camp, Christian camps all around that are beginning to welcome campers again. And for everyone who proclaims your good news wherever they might be.
Form us, O God. Reform us again and again and again that we may make a difference and we might be the difference that you require. May the God of healing free the world from fear, freeing us for peace both treasured and pursued. May the God of love keep our commitment clear to a world restored to human life renewed. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new. Faithful, Christ call. God of healing, God of freedom, God of love, hear our prayers and keep our commitment clear. By your spirit, help us work for peace, share our joy, and help build a new world. Faithful to the call of Christ, who teaches us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new, faithful when we hear Christ's call. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own people in order that together we may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light, working for peace, singing, sharing our joy, working for a world that's new. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and always. And may all God's people say together, Amen.